Hello everyone, and welcome back to World of Warship Splits with Terry. We've had a lot of battleship action this week, so I felt that uh, something else is in order. And before you all ask in the comments, yes, I know that the Somers is out in a, in a chest. And I'm going to get to that, but I haven't had enough time with the ship yet. So I'll try to see over weekend that I can get some more games in and form an actual opinion. Because I don't actually have any other tier 10 destroyers. Most certainly not an American one. So I do need to spend a little bit of time with the ship just to get my feel for it and give you my honest opinion. In the meantime, we'll be looking at cruisers. <laughs> As more specifically, at the Algerie the tier 7 French Tech 2 cruiser. Now, the Algerie was, well, a, an actual French cruiser. She was actually built. And she is generally considered one of the most advanced designs of the time. She didn't get to do anything because, well, the French kind of got overrun by the Germans, rather surprisingly, uh, which meant that most of the French fleet was either being bombed by the British or was sitting in Toulon with the Vichy, under the Vichy Fr French uh, government, uh, which was officially neutral. Eventually, towards the later part of the Second World War, the Americans invaded North Africa. Well, the British were fighting the Germans in North Africa for quite a while, but eventually the Americans joined the party which we have actually talked about recently with the Massachusetts, because she had a fight with one of Jean Bart's turrets <laughs> that she won. So uh, the Germans concluded that um, given that's going on and one of the French, I think one of the French admirals actually defected, they would very much like to take over the French fleet that was sitting there. Uh, the French obviously realized what was going to happen and decided, nope, before that's going to happen, we are going to sink them. Hopefully we can sink them in such a way that we can actually unsink them later on when the whole thing is over and keep using them. So they did plant charges in the ships and tried to, well, were planning to open up valves and everything such that they would sink they wouldn't actually uh, they wouldn't actually keel over and then sink, uh, sink, sink like that. But uh, such that they would just actually sink down a little bit into the water, such that the Germans couldn't use them. And later on, it would just be a matter of lifting them out again, getting the water gone and, um, you know, making use. Well, obviously, the Germans had sent some tanks and some troops uh, who were then asking politely the French to not be doing that. And the French were a, bit, a little bit procrastinating, claiming bureaucracy and uh, not being responsible and looking for superior officers and paperwork. So while they were keeping the Germans busy, uh, they set the charges. And in case of the Algerie, they actually uh, the, the Germans actually made it onto the ship and um, asked the French not to sink her. But the French had already set the charges, so they politely informed the Germans that the ship was about to blow up. And then everybody left, and then she sunk. Well, <laughs> so much for that. Uh, later during the war, I think the Italians actually um, tried to try to get her, their hands on her and actually make her usable again, but uh, it didn't, didn't really work out. They wouldn't have had the, the fuel for it anyway. So the Algerie really never re never really got to, to be tried in the war, but it, she is generally described also here in the game as, um, as a, a very modern and um, advanced heavy cruiser especially in terms of armor. So there's this, she has a very powerful armor thing going on. Well, she might, <laughs> but uh, we don't obviously know where exactly the Citadel sits in this ship, but I can tell you that this ship, armor or not, will absolutely get you deleted by battleship, battleship shells. The Citadel has to be sitting very, very high above the water, such that if you are getting hit, you are getting citadel very easily. In terms of, well, other things. She's got, we've got a very average kind of survivability for this tier. 27,000 hit points is okay. Everything else is pretty average. She is decently maneuverable. 
and uh, she is decently quick with 31 knots as a base speed, especially if you actually have the engine accelerator running, because you do get an engine accelerator in these ships. The guns is where it's all at. So with she, she gets eight guns, four, quad, uh, four twin turrets, and while they are a little bit of a step down in terms of fire, uh, just setting fires from the absolutely excellent Galissonier and Premium de Grasse at tier 6 with the 150s, or the Bayard at tier 8, these are not bad guns. So both the... High, the she, they do a very reasonable amount of high explosive damage. They have actually pretty good armor-piercing shells as well, especially if she gets... Uh, if she is top tier. And the fire chance of 8% is very good as well. The, the range is very good uh, with 11.6 kilometers. And, as is common with the French cruisers, you get torpedoes. You don't get very many of them. You get two triple launchers, but they have very, very good torpedo angles, both forwards and backwards. So unlike the Japanese cruisers, which have better torpedoes, arguably, but can't, for the life of them, actually shoot them forwards. They always have to turn, which is usually not a good idea. <laughs> so uh, these things are capable of, to a degree, being aggressive with their torpedo load as well. Although, again, you want to be very, very careful uh, what you're getting close to. Even uh, other heavy cruisers will do very severe damage to this ship, and battleships can absolutely shred her. The AA is okay, nothing to write home about for Tier 7. Uh, you're not an anti-air cruiser, and you cannot also defend yourself from um, concentrated airdrops. But uh, it, it is there. The surface detection is pretty decent with 8 kilometers, and more often than not you actually may have to use it to just get out of dodge. So that's one thing where you can use the engine accelerator to uh, keep your distance, because most of the time you do want to keep your distance. You do not want to get into close range fights with pretty much anything. Uh, you don't necessarily have the DPS and the maneuverability to deal with destroyers if you are getting into knife fights. and um, well, you always have the torpedoes, but uh, the rapid reload is one thing where she really, really becomes dangerous, even if you are finding yourself in a close range, um, close range fight with anything, because you get rapid reload too, which, if we look at it, actually increases our sp uh, reload speed by 30% uh, for 20 seconds. So you can build her for reload, and you can output a very fair amount of, of fire. So, for example, let's say you're you're fighting a battleship and um, you try to set a fire. You try to you try to bait a damage con, and if they go for it and they damage con, you trigger the rapid reload and try to set three more fires, <laughs> and then just watch them burn. Uh, so that's sort of the style. You do not want to be aggressive in these ships. These are not ships that you rush caps in. Uh, play them more like the Japanese ships. They're not quite as stealthy as the Japanese ones, and the torpedoes are. They don't have the torpedo punch power, but the guns are excellent. And again, the armor piercing against destroyers at range or against uh, other cruisers, especially if she's if you're talking same or um, or top tier, is is very very good. So, what have we put in equipment wise? I have uh, the Mod 2 in the first slot for faster reload because the turrets well first of all you have four turrets So if you lose one, it's not the end of the world and uh, I haven't found that she loses the turrets very often. So uh, That's that's a pretty good. Uh, that's a pretty good thing to have I do have both steering mods in here it as usual It's always a good not a bad thing to have the propulsion mod 1 as well That would be a valid choice but for me uh, when it comes to kiting and um, dodging things, I do need the steering often more. So 7.4 seconds is still slightly on the slow side for rudder shift, and the traverse is not as quick as well. So if we, for example, if we look at the um, at the Galissonier, uh, she is she is definitely more maneuverable than the Algerie with almost the same with the same setup or well with just one steering mod or get, getting almost uh, a second faster turn time and she gets a slightly better traverse as well so it does take a little bit getting used to because again 
and tier 6 you've got uh, two thirds of the firepower forwards so you can do a lot of bow in stuff whereas with the Algerie it's more of a kiter and uh, just stay at range and keep using your um, keep using your gun range because compared she does get almost a kilometer more range than uh, the Galicinia so that's that I, I have um, Monsieur Foubert in here and uh, he's been going up the, fr the French line, so we do have uh, nothing surprising in 1 and 2. We've got the artillery maintenance, victorious charge. I do have fire supremacy for an additional rapid reload, because the Algerie only gets 2, I think, out of the box. Yes, she gets 2. If we look at the tech tree going further up until, let's say, I guess, uh, no, that's a battleship. Uh, we do get three starting with the Charles Martel, so you could argue that it's not strictly necessary, and you would you would set the captain up instead for um, for the survivalist. So that would be a valid choice as well. And then I do have generalist in in the next one. Uh, exploit weakness is a good choice as well. Uh, the generalist here is just for a little bit more survivability because I do find that um, if I do get shot at. Things tend to be a, a little on the sketchy side, which also brings us to fully prepared to get the repair kits down. She does not have a huge amount of health. Um, and then uh, Master Reloader obviously is one of the aims that we'll be going for. Uh, in terms of, uh, of shells, I think at least for, for these kind of ships, both would probably be a, good, a valid choice. Uh, I do like the armor piercing shells. And while you never want to fight battleships at close range <laughs> with these things, uh, against other cruisers, they are very, very effective. Or, as long as you're not giving broadside because they can do the same thing you're doing to them back at you. All right then, let's put, uh, let's put the Sea Storm Camo on. And um, yeah, let's, let's, have, let's have a battle. So these were literally two battles I played after lunch. I figured after lunch I'll have a bit of a break and uh, maybe play one or two battles in the Algerie and see if I can get something to show what the ship can do and what where the weaknesses of the ship lie. So I'm generally picking battles. I, I, play, I play a couple of battles and I'm generally picking those that are demonstrating the best um, what, where the ship's strength and weaknesses lie. In this case, we are top tier playing on Bay of Storms, which is one of my favorite maps, really. And we do have a couple of cruisers on the enemy team, two battleships, and a fusion. So, let's go. Uh, again, in the Algerie, you do not want to take point. Uh, just because the ship is fragile. And she does, take, she, she does tend to take citadel damage, especially against battleships. So, you want to play her at long range against battleships. Uh, we have a destroyer here with us. There's an Acasta, so that one can go spotting. And I'm gonna hang. I'm gonna hang left, a little bit. I'm gonna switch her over to the high explosive for now, because what we're going to be seeing first is probably battleships. So most likely at range, we want to be using the high explosive against battleships. See if we can set a fire against other cruisers um, at long range, probably as well. But uh, at closer range, especially light cruisers, we can do some serious damage with the armor piercing. So engine boost up, and she does almost 36, yeah, 35.5 knots over the engine boost up. Okay, we've got one cruiser spotted. There's the Atlanta. So, light, light, very lightly armored cruiser. Let's get the high explosive out, switch back to the armor piercing, and see what we can what we can see. Okay, there's the Fushun. Uh, see what we can do against an Atlanta from this at uh, almost 10 kilometers. But I do want to keep my distance here. And uh, yeah, some semi pens against the Atlanta. So you see, you see at these extremely long ranges, the armor piercing loses, starts losing its effectiveness against destroyers. On the other hand, like that fusion over there, that's a completely different story. And who else do we have? We don't want to rush too far ahead, but so far nobody seems to be shooting back at us. Okay, the fusion has gone undetected. I'm out of I'm out of torpedo range of the fusion, so I don't really have to worry about that one. There's uh, Galissonia, unless fusion does a run up. And uh, there we go. There's the first citadel. So at, at this range, um, against the ex these extremely lightly armored light cruisers, we can do a very serious amount of damage. There's, in the other, there's the next citadel. Uh, these torpedo angles are absolutely excellent, so she can shoot from... There's no need to give broadsides. I'm just going to put her in reverse, just in case the Fushun has been torping, because he has been unspotted for a little bit. And um, 
just just angling away against the Galicionaire. So, I mean, he's, he's using high explosive anyway, so it doesn't really matter all that much. But um, uh, see if we can get another Citadel. We can get a full, good set of full pens. Is he running into one of my torps? Yep, he's running into one of my torpedoes. And now this is probably a very, very dead Galicionaire. Well, he has done some damage to me. Okay, this should be Galicionaire torps. Well, or Atlanta torps, not sure. Well, he has some done some damage. No, Atlanta has four, doesn't he? Uh, oh, there come the Fusion torps. Yeah, yeah, okay, I'm out of range. So it's all good. Uh, well, yeah, and that is what happens when a f when a Fuso shoots at you. <laughs> Suddenly, you don't have any health anymore. So yeah, that was bl that was a paddling. I didn't even see him. He he's kind of at the edge of my of my range. So now there he is. Yeah. So now I do have to I do have to disengage. And obviously the Atlanta at this point um, is is trying to set me on fire and just trying to gun me down. So we're in, we're gonna boost the engines. We're gonna stop firing. I'm gonna drop some some blind torpedoes just in case we get sunk right here, uh, just in case they can hit anything. And I'm gonna stop firing so I go undetected. The Atlanta doesn't have the greatest of range because she has only the 127 mil guns, so I don't think he can still hit me. But I do want to make sure that I'm not uh, getting hit by the Fuso. And uh, I think I should. Yeah. Okay. I'm going undetected. So at this point we're gonna have to wait for the damage con uh, for the repair kit to come off cooldown. Back to the high explosive because I do see a Fuso over there, and uh, that's not something we want to be in any in any range of. So you do really have to be very careful with who you're giving broadsides because battleships can outright delete you in this thing. Again, not because of the uh, the armor being particularly weak, but it's just strong enough to um, to arm battleship shells. Okay, let's repair a little bit. Now we can start opening up again. Now we will have to check. I'm on blind torp some drops. Uh, we're gonna have to check if the Fuso is shooting back at us. So I'm angling a little bit more away, just to see where is the Fuso, where is the Fuso shooting next. If he's shooting back at me, I can dodge. Otherwise, I can keep firing at him. But he's got other things to shoot at. So just a rapid reload off and see if I can get some more shots in. But it looks like he's gonna eat a whole bunch of torpedoes and yeah, the New York takes him out. My, my torps might have actually gotten him otherwise. Okay then. Um, Hasn't shot back at me. Now, there are two cruisers left. One's over there, and I think the Atlanta is still alive. So, um, yeah, where am I gonna go? Okay, let's go for the Atlanta, because I'm never gonna make it over there in, in time. So, excuse me, New York, I'm just, uh, yep, sorry, I changed my mind. <laughs> I wanna go this way. Uh, back to the armor piercing, there's the Atlanta still sitting in the smoke screen. Smoke screen inspired, Atlanta stationary, so fire out. See if we can get some more hits in. Uh, yeah, yeah, two full pens, one semi. And uh, get another salvo, but uh, she might just get her get herself deleted before my shots even make it there. Ah, uh, yeah, she's gone. Okay. Um, then leaves only one, and the rest of my team is in the capture circle. So this is going to be up. Oh, yeah, there, it's over very quickly. Yes. So do be very, very careful with battleships because they can absolutely citadel you many times, <laughs> as you have seen in the intro. Since this one was a little bit short, and um, again because I said I was trying to do some battles to see where she shines and and where she kind of has trouble, let's uh, let's let's do another one. And here we are on Silent Shoal, another another map that I really actually enjoy, another good mid uh, mid tier map. Um, we've got a <laughs> we've got a fleet member in the enemy team with the Arizona, so we're gonna have to keep an eye. And uh, New Mexico, Normandy, Fiji, Pensacola, and two destroyers. So again, we're top tier. If the Algerie is bottom tier, you got to be really, really careful because um, in tier eight battles, <laughs> she does not like 406 millimeter shells. Okay, where are we? We are center. We definitely do not want to be in the center because we do not want to attract any attention. So I'm going to head over to that big island uh, just uh, just ahead. And uh, just again, switch over to the high explosive, assuming that we're going to hit battleships first. And the, torpe the torpedoes into uh, narrow spread, because I do want to use them at range. And there's only three of them. So especially that Icarus is heading over, it looks like Icarus is heading over middle. So we'll, we don't get any scouting. There's uh, there's a Galicionaire. Let's see. Um, just going to tell the team that... Uh, that there's someone come, gonna come around there. So we're gonna get at least one destroyer and maybe one cruiser in the battleship coming around this corner. 
So we do need to watch out for this. Now, I don't want everybody here, but yeah, thanks, Kalisunia. Very well done. Nice reaction. So he reacts nicely and goes um, goes kind of spotting. Okay, there's Gaja. Gaja goes middle. So I'm going to slow down because I'm right now behind the island, just in case Gaja decides that he wants to go for the battleships. And there's a Normandy. So slowing down and see if I can shoot at him without being spotted. Oh, got to go a little bit more forward. Okay, there's Fushun as well. And it looks like Gaja comes around this side too. So they're... So we've got three ships. You see, this is why you want to have somebody uh, covering this flank. Otherwise, they're just coming. They're going to loop around and try to corner, uh, try to corner you. Okay, some perspective drops on the Fushun, just in case. Five kilometers. I'm probably going to fire high explosives, and because um, they will do nice full pens. And I'm not sure if the armor piercing is probably going to start overpenning at around five kilometers. So I do need to reverse because um, there are two destroyers coming around, and it looks like Fushun is. Extremely aggressive, so I'm gonna to need to go bow in. Uh, Galicineas is gonna move out, that's a fire. I think, is it the Perma? I think it's a Perma on the Fushun. And just bow in a couple more shots. There, there are probably Fushun tops in the way, yep, there they are. Let's see if I can actually wiggle, because I'm in reverse. Let's see if I can, I still have the time. These are very, these are fast. Uh, Fushun has uh, deep waters. Do I have time to move out of the way? No, I'm probably gonna take two on the nose. It's unfortunate, because he's left such a nice big gap in here for me, but that's okay. We can heal that. Okay, there comes Normandy. Now the whole team is has come, so we've all lemming trained over here. This is not ideal because that means that one sole destroyer there is handling the other uh, the other side, and there's there's battleships heading that way. So, um, okay, the grass I cannot torp because you're in the way. <laughs> Otherwise, I would have torped the Normandy, but he probably would have dodged that. Okay, so well, at least I'm gonna disengage and I'm gonna head over and um, well defend our cut really. I am starting to take some fire. It's probably battleship fire. The, so um, given my whole team is over here to deal with two ships, I can go over there. Okay, there's New Mexico. Yep, uh, New Mexico has terrible dispersion at, at this range. It's probably not going to hit me, but I'm still going to have to... Okay, New Mexico and Fiji. I'm st still going to have to um, actually, you know, kite away. So I do need to trade space, and that's almost a full health New Mexico. So I, I am going to need some help, so please team... Uh, in mid-tier games, you do have to direct your teams a little bit. Uh, at this range, New Mexico is never going to hit me, especially if he's not ex uh, ex expecting me to be this quick. Okay, he doesn't damage con a single fire. That is um, more than you'd usually expect from tier 6 players. How about 2? Are you damage conning 2? Yeah, you're damage conning 2. Okay, so now it's just a matter of setting him on fire again and getting these perma fires going. Uh, there comes another salvo. I'm on in reverse. Even without the, um, uh, the acceleration mod, I can dodge under these shells. And I'm um, just going to reverse and keep the ship mostly angled such that I'm only giving my my, my, my rear. And then just uh, wheel a bit around, get the front turret firing and then turn around the other side again. Uh, just to see that I am staying well away from his fire. Okay, that's one perma and he's no longer shooting at me. So at this point I can just uh, even the ship out. Because if he's not shooting at me, then there's no need for me to dodge it. There's another perma fire. See, this is this is how you really want to play the Algeri. You you want to play her at range. You want to you want to frustrate other players into not shooting at you because they can they can't really hit you that well. But the team has it has reacted very very well. He's come back. I mean, it would have been enough if one of the cruisers. <laughs> See, this is the thing. You make a call, everybody reacts, and then um, then Lemmings trains back. So, so that destroyer on the flank is chasing one of our battleships, which is a bit unfortunate. One of the light cruisers could have well stayed back and just killed that destroyer there. But um, it's fine. Um, wish we'd, we're we've got two ships down, so that Arizona is next. And uh, I'm not sure. Did he? Maybe maybe he went AFK because he's looking at the other direction. So um, I'm not sure what he's up to. I mean, he's not shooting at me, so I'm just going to keep firing. Drop some torpedoes. And I do have to be careful. Okay, there's a Fiji coming. I don't want to get too close. This is actually way closer than you normally want to be a battleship. So if he uh, if he was reacting, I wouldn't have I wouldn't have gone this close. But um, he's probably dead. So at this point, I can might have been disconnected. Uh, yep, there he goes. Okay, so at this point, uh, Fiji, um, was it Fiji goes undetected, so he's probably got torps out. And uh, I'm back to the armor piercing because it's a British light cruiser. The armor does hold up against the 150 millimeters pretty well. So uh, you, I mean, you don't want to give broadside at point blank, especially. Okay, there's a Pensacola. That's that thing's got a lot of guns. So see if I can dodge the Fiji torp. Might be taking that one. I'm gonna try and snivel around. No, I just uh, took one. It's not so bad. It's, uh, it's a British one, and my heel is on, 
is off cooldown, so it's all good. Okay, uh, Fiji, I'm gonna drop some torps in your direction as well. And um, just reverse out, keep angled against the Pensacola because the Pensa has guns that can hurt me very, very badly. And the Fiji is gonna be dead soon anyway. And I can tank his 150 mil armor piercing. That is not having a really great chance of getting through me. Okay, looks like he might be taking one torp, but he's dead before that. Okay, got him with the guns. And um, that leaves the Pensacola, but... Uh, oh, I still hit something. Must have been one of the DDs. Okay, there's a... Yep, there's a Gajamada. <laughs> Run into one of my torps. So Pensacola, obviously Pensacola broadside at 5 kilometers. I have 200 millimeter guns as well. Let's see if I can get some hits in. Yeah, it's a nice Citadel before the Galicionier. No, sorry, it's the De Grasse. Before the De Grasse actually takes out the Pensa. And uh, Gajamada. At this range, I'm a piercing because you will get nice full pens with the 200 mils. There we go, 800 points of damage per hit. Uh, is Gaja running into these torps? Gaja is very dead. So let's see if we can get the kill on this one as well. Uh, for the Iron Fortress. Okay, he's dodging. Uh, he might be running into the island. We've run in, I got one more salvo, probably. Okay, he might be beaching, so I'm gonna shoot it there. No, no, he's not beaching. Can we get him? Can we get him? Yes, there we go. Last second, third kill. And yeah, if I would have killed the Fushun as well if I still had time. So, all in all, I think this is a this is actually a very fun cruiser to play. You do have to keep your distance, obviously and um, abuse those torpedo angles, uh, make sure that you're dodging especially battleship fire. You can sustain 100 mil 150 millimeter, not so much the 200 millimeter, especially German 200 mil. So if you're up against uh, against the hippo or something, uh, run, <laughs> set it on fire and just run away <laughs> because <laughs> these will shred you. So, um, but yeah, all in all, this is not a terrible cruiser. Uh, it takes a bit getting used to after the Galicionaire because it is a shift. It's a similar shift like from the Nuremberg to the York, the German tier 7, first heavy cruiser. But I'm enjoying the ship, so I'm definitely going to keep playing that. Anyway, that's it for today. Thanks, everybody, and I'll see you next time. Bye!